Hello, everyone. It's Jeremy Osterberger with Bic Magazine. Today, I'm joined by ExxonMobil's Gene Weber. Gene is Senior Project Manager for ExxonMobil and working on the Blade Project at the Beaumont, Texas Refinery. Hey, Gene, thank you so much for parceling out some time for us today. No, it's great to be with you, Jeremy. Thanks for having us. So, uh, Gene, Blade is short for Beaumont Light Atmospheric Distillation Expansion. You can say that 27 times fast, but uh, tell us more about sort of the scope of the project and the purpose of the investment. Well, I'm glad you addressed that up front because that's our most popular question. What does BLADE stand for? So now we got that out of the way. <laughs> so the, the, uh, the project is essentially a new crude unit. It'll be the third crude unit on the complex here in Beaumont. It's, it's going to take crude from the Permian Basin and make finished products uh, like most refiners would make diesel, for example. Uh, the capacity is 250,000 barrels a day, which is a decent sized crude unit by any standard. And in this facility, this project will increase the capacity of Beaumont refinery by more than 65%. So it will be a U.S. leader when we're done with late. Wow, fantastic. So uh, talk a little about some of the jobs as well, uh, Gene, that's produced from this uh, project. Uh, of course, you got some contractors in there temporarily. What's going to be the outcome of this project? Yeah, so for the project as we put it in, it's it's mostly uh, engineering and construction types, as you would imagine. When the project is finished, it will be operators, maintenance folks. Those are the kinds of jobs that we're going to create long term to run the facility. And Gene Blaze, previous target for completion was in 2022. A little virus named COVID threw a wrench in uh, many projects around the world, not just this one. So how has COVID impacted this project and what's the status of Blade now? Okay, so as everybody knows, 2020 was the wrench that you mentioned. Uh, we had unprecedented market downturn uh, that really affected our financial situation. And so we had to look across the corporation and make some, some tough decisions. Uh, one of those decisions was to reduce our 2020 capital spend by about 30%, mm -hmm. uh, which was about $10 billion of reduction uh, worldwide in, in, in uh, capital spend. So the other thing we're doing is we're cutting back on our uh, OPEX, our operating expenses, by 15%. Uh, in refining and chemicals in particular, we had to look at all of the projects that were in the portfolio uh, and make some difficult decisions, essentially adjusting the timing of the expansion project and uh, in the pacing of the expansion project. We do get some benefit from that. And so uh, we're able to... Uh, uncover some efficiencies in the project and primarily the reason for it is to better align with the return of demand for the products that the project creates. So for example, diesel demand is down right now. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when diesel demand comes back will be about the time that we're starting up Blade. Hey, so Gene, let's talk logistics. Uh, much of the equipment and materials for construction are, are being brought to the refinery of the port of Beaumont by way of the Natchez River. Give us some details on the logistical challenges that, that come from Blade. Okay, so first let me say kind of the status, okay, of, of where we are. So the project I would call is about at its midpoint. Okay. Uh, we have finished engineering, we have finished procurement, uh, what's left is essentially is construction okay and when i say we've finished procurement uh, we have purchased everything um, most of the materials are already on site here either in warehouse locations or lay down yards uh, but some of the larger equipment items that were modularized uh, because we are a modular project uh, are still arriving okay so to give you a bit of a rundown uh, the strategy is to take very large shipments of uh, equipment and modules. The ships are too big to dock here at, at site. And so we've been working closely with the Port of Beaumont to, um, to moor at their facilities. There we transload from these very large ships onto smaller river barges. We transport the equipment back to site where we've built a roll on roll off dock and a heavy haul road. And then we transport the equipment across the heavy haul road and into our site. Um, that, that where we are in that process uh, is we had our first major sh shipment, first of three that we received in November. And that shipment was primarily heaters. So large refining heaters that were modularized. Uh, all, we, we had six of those heaters. All six of those have been brought onto site and are now resting on their foundations. We're in the middle 
uh, receiving shipment two at the moment. So if you drive over the bridge in Beaumont and you and you and you look over down the river towards downtown, you you may see a big red ship with modules on it. That's that's the ship that we're unloading unloading right now. Hmm. That shipment has eight modules on it uh, that weigh approximately 15 million pounds. So it's quite a bit of weight. Uh, we have already transported four of the eight modules onto site and set those on those on their foundations. We still have four more to go. Uh, and we expect to finish that next week. Uh, to give you a pers some perspective about the size of these modules, the tallest modules are over 100 feet tall and some of the longer modules are more than 220 feet long. So it's it's quite an engineering feat. If you've ever watched these TV shows with engineering wonders, uh, you would be impressed with some of this major equipment that we're that we're bringing onto site. So that's the second shipment. The third and final shipment will arrive in Beaumont in mid-April, and it will take us about two weeks. Uh, it's same similar size shipment. It's eight modules. Uh, it's even heavier. It's approaching 20 million pounds with the with the final shipment. But we'll get those uh, modules onto site, set on foundations, safe and sound. And then at that point, we will have received essentially all of our major equipment on the project. Wow, Gene, so I've seen that time-lapse video of the atmospheric fractionator tower lift into its foundation. Uh, give us the uh, give the specs on that bad boy. That was over 400 feet tall from what I understand. And what was the weight on that on that a piece of equipment? Yeah, it was more like 300 feet tall. Okay. Uh, right. So close to a football field wow. and about a million pounds. And so uh, we had a number, we had about 15 vessels like that. That happened to be the largest one. Uh, and that takes a tremendous amount of planning. We, we hired Mammut. Uh, both for the transportation from the Port of Beaumont and also the lifting at site. Uh, and they've done a fantastic job uh, with this. Uh, everything's been done flawlessly. We haven't had any injuries, any incidents along the way. And one, one of the things that, I'll, that I want to mention is the reason that we're doing all this, the reason that the project is modular uh, and that we're, we're taking advantage of our location here on the river is that uh, our public affairs group and the refinery leadership team has always had a close relationship with the community here in Beaumont and in constant dialogue, uh, either with base operations or with upcoming expansions or other projects. Uh, we talked to the community about what are their concerns and, and one of their primary concerns with a venture of this size, frankly, is traffic and it's, it's both the, the workforce coming and going every day and also the number of truckloads and the size of the equipment that's coming through the community. And so we're fortunate that we were located here on a river and we can take advantage of that and bring equipment into the refinery over the river and avoid sending thousands and thousands of trucks through the community. And so it's refinery's got a, a great relationship uh, with the community of Beaumont and it I think it demonstrates a continued commitment to to listen to their concerns and, and address those concerns on the project. ExxonMobil is is deeply committed to the safety and environment of the community. Uh, we've already executed four million safe work hours, uh, and and we're very proud of a of a unique culture we've established here in Blade versus versus industry or some of our competitors. So we ask everybody when they join the Blade family to get on board. Uh, to show courage and care, respect for each other, to recognize all the good work that we're doing here. Uh, we've been recognized both internally and externally. So for uh, ExxonMobil, we were awarded the 2019 Global Projects SHE Award, which is Safety, Security, Health, and Environment. Uh, it's awarded to one project across the globe, and Blade, Blade was the recipient of that, so we're very proud of that. We also were recognized by uh, Kurt, the Construction Users Roundtable, uh, for uh, safety excellence. And so we're starting to, we, we might have to build a trophy case, uh, but we want this to continue through the end of the project and we finish without hurting a single person. That's really our goal. Well, Gene, uh, we know you got to get back to it. This is a lot of fun. It's incredible to see the scale of investment along the Gulf Coast by Exxon Mobil over the real past seven years or so. And certainly Blade is another impressive expansion. So uh, please have us out for the ribbon cutting. I'm putting pressure on the team when I say that. And uh, <laughs> and we just thank you so much for uh, joining Big Magazine today. And uh, know that you're welcome back anytime to chat with us, Gene. I'd be great to come back. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay, guys. Hey, as always, we are most grateful for our audience. Please like and share this recording with colleagues. 
And for more industry videos and podcasts, visit BicMagazine.com. Remember, it's what we do together that counts.